Well, thank you, Barbara. Yes, so I'm going to give you a little uh, double presentation. I apologise for this. I'm going to compress surf slightly and give you some hot for the press information on uh, excavations at Rangi, which will tally well with what uh, Murray was talking about just before uh, the break there. Um, first, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a surf. So, Fortivia has been known since the 17th century, at least, as an early royal site of Scotland. And according to the, the chronicles of, uh, of uh, the kings of Alba, uh, King Kenneth MacAlpin is said to have died at the palace of Fortivia in uh, AD 858. But we, our knowledge of this area has dramatically increased from the 1970s onwards through uh, aerial photography. Uh, showing that as well as being an important uh, royal site, this was also one of the major prehistoric monument complexes of Scotland and indeed of uh, uh, Northwest Europe. <coughs> so today I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what we've discovered so far. This was designed as a, a five-year project really, so I'm going to tell you about what we've uh, discovered so far from 2007 to nine. give you a little bit on the 2010 season, what we did last year. We don't have a really carbon chronology for that yet. Um, and I'm going to give you a provisional sequence of the prehistoric activity as identified at Fortivit uh, so far. <coughs> and then I'll give you a, a little rundown of some of the highlights of the um, uh, archaeology of the, of the royal site of the first millennium uh, AD. So this is a, a provisional sequence, as I say. Um, but uh, will undoubtedly be refined by the ray carbon dating from uh, 2010 season. Um, but 2007 till 9 really concentrated on two main elements of the prehistoric uh, uh, complex. Um, the entrance avenue of uh, 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 which is a massive uh, timber enclosure, late Neolithic timber enclosure, um, and within this uh, a henge monument and, t and timber circle. <coughs> okay, so uh, so the first um, episode of activity we've identified as part of the uh, monument complex itself, and perhaps the catalyst for this whole uh, crazy endeavour, which uh, is probably one of the best descriptions for what uh, goes on here in the Neolithic, is um, a later Neolithic uh, cremation cemetery. And this seems to be one of the primary phases of the monument complex. Um, and this was located uh, in the interior henge monument, uh, in the center of this monument. And this consisted of at least nine um, separate cremation deposits, probably in uh, wooden vessels, perhaps flat, flat base wooden vessels. And these seem to be uh, placed uh, right at the start of the third millennium uh, BC. <coughs> And then closely followed, following um, the uh, construction of the cremation cemetery is a whole series of monuments. Um, and the first major monument identified is the later Neolithic palisade and enclosure. And this is, would have been quite a phenomenal uh, a monument. So as I was saying before, about 260 metres across, uh, defined by uh, huge oak posts at least, uh, some of them at least half a metre, some of them up to a metre in diameter, so we're talking about whole tree trunks here, um, and approached by an incredibly tight entrance avenue, which is only four metres across. So only a couple of people, perhaps, um, uh, walking side by side would be, allowed to, uh, would be able to access uh, this uh, enclosure at any one time. And these posts probably standing at least six, seven metres high, so a very impressive uh, uh, monument. And really, carbon dating shows that this was in, in use um, from probably about 2,900 to 2,500 uh, calibrated BC, so falling on from the cremation cemetery and perhaps enclosing that earlier uh, uh, cremation cemetery. So here's an uh, image of uh, the entrance avenue uh, under excavation. This gives you an idea of the scale of the uh, uh, timbers involved uh, to build this. That's probably uh, bad health and safety practice there. <laughs> so I, probably, I probably shouldn't show that image. Um, and then following on from the palisade enclosure, within the palisade enclosure, 
um, was constructed um, a timber circle. So perhaps um, a generation or, 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 or a, a century or so after palisade enclosure, the timber circle gets constructed inside. Um, and this is quite a substantial timber circle, about 45 metres across, again constructed of, of massive uh, oak posts, as uh, ably demonstrated by our uh, uh, diggers here. Um, and what this seems to be doing is either enclosing or perhaps uh, uh, closing off the cremation cemetery uh, to further use. Certainly it defines a more restricted space within this uh, uh, larger enclosure. And then um, following on from, on from that, we get constructed um, a henge monument, an earthen uh, henge monument. And perhaps the ideas of exclusion and containment uh, characterised by the timber circle could also be said to characterise uh, the construction uh, of, of the henge. Um, and uh, really carbon dating uh, shows that uh, this monument is constructed towards the uh, second half of the uh, uh, third millennium uh, BC. And again, perhaps marking in some way the earlier cremation cemetery, which was now within the centre of this uh, earthen uh, enclosure. And then perhaps one of the more uh, famous finds from uh, Fortivia, towards the end of the third millennium BC, we get a renewed, renewed phase of burial, the cemetery being remade essentially. Uh, and the most spectacular example is the uh, th late third millennium uh, dagger burial from Fortiviet. Um, and here, very peculiar preservation conditions where there was no body preserved, um, but amazing organic preservation here. So we can tell from uh, various analysis that there was a body and it was laid um, with the head towards the uh, south side of the kist. And around the head, there was a halo of quartz pebbles. Um, and then to one side of the body was a whole series of different artifacts, including uh, a bro bronze dagger with a gold uh, hilt mount here, um, uh, a smaller knife dagger, and all sorts of uh, organic material, perhaps the remains of a bag, a fire making kit, um, and perhaps most remarkably, amongst all this organic material, was lots and lots of preserved flower heads of meadowsweet. <coughs> so clearly there had been a whole bunch of meadowsweet placed with the body uh, in this late third millennium uh, uh, grave. <coughs> so that's the, the, the kind of provisional <coughs> sequence of activity we've identified from, two th uh, from the 2007 to nine excavations. <coughs> and, oh, sorry, and that's the, uh, uh, on top of that Bronze Age kist was this absolutely ginormous uh, capstone and underneath the capstone was this carving, perhaps some sort of axe or mace head here, uh, and then a, some sort of eye motif perhaps down, down here. And that was placed facing the burial within, within the kist. So that's the kind of provisional sequence, but uh, 2010 is uh, uh, with another major uh, um, season on the prehistoric material, and this will undoubtedly alter the story slightly. And here in 2010, the focus was outside of the uh, uh, palisaded enclosure. So we dug another henge here and a strange double palace, uh, palisaded uh, a small enclosure on this side. So this is, a, again, an aerial, aerial image, uh, giving an idea of the scale of, of the monuments and the trenches, but a bit like a Nick, Nick's excavation at Ness Brogger, this is still only really tickling around the edges of what is an absolutely ginormous uh, uh, monument complex. <coughs> so 2010, we excavated uh, another henge monument. Uh, here, um, the primary phase seems to be some form of rectangular timber structure. Um, again, made of large oak posts, seems to have been burnt down and then replaced, enclosed, a bit like the other uh, commission cemetery, enclosed by this earthen uh, henge monument, which actually cuts some of the uh, earlier uh, postals. And from the postals, we got uh, a, a good assemblage of all of recorded uh, 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 Beaker Early Bronze Age uh, uh, pottery. So probably the first phase is um, something like 2400 to 2000 uh, calibrated uh, BC. <coughs> and then hints of later um, use 
of this monument with uh, an iron spearhead, glass bead, and also a, a ginormous pit dug in the centre of this hedge, which I'll, I'll come back to in a minute. Um, we also had two further trenches looking at the palisaded enclosure. Um, one trench uh, here, which is actually the junction of the entrance avenue and the uh, main boundary of the enclosure. Um, and here we had even larger post holes than them being identified at the start of the avenue. Some of them as much as a metre and a half deep, two and a half metres wide. Again, suggesting absolutely ginormous uh, tree trunks being used to uh, construct this enclosure. And this is what it looks like on the ground when you excavate uh, here. And then on the uh, eastern side of the boundary, we also had a trench um, over on this side of the enclosure here, showing that the uh, posts of the avenue were equally spaced around about five up to five and a half metres apart. No evidence of any interval posts at all, so perhaps uh, you know, it's more of an open enclosure than has been suggested for other monuments of this type. Um, and what seems to be coming out of all these different postals is that they're all, they're all constructed in different ways, and perhaps also dismantled in different ways, perhaps suggesting that different groups of people were coming together in order to build this uh, uh, giant enclosure. And then, finally, um, on the uh, uh, western side of the palace enclosure, outside, um, not to be outdone by uh, 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 Nick Carr this morning, perhaps we have some sort of temple here as well, <laughs> uh, um, for Tiviet, where we have um, some sort of double palisades, almost certainly a post setting on the outside, possibly a post setting on the inside, perhaps some sort of building even. Um, but then at the centre of this uh, enclosure uh, series, is a very, very peculiar triple kist, which uh, um, has three compartments here, um, uh, and you know, fairly scattered evidence of uh, bits of burnt bone and possible body stains in here. And then f from right next door to this triple kist, which is here, there was a, a large pit here, and again we got some very nice early Bronze Age uh, beaker pottery from the centre uh, of this enclosure. And also, standing at uh, one of the entranceways to the enclosure, we also got uh, a dismantled uh, standing stone. So clearly some sort of uh, a timber and stone <coughs> monument um, uh, uh, built outside of the uh, palace of the enclosure. Again, probably towards the uh, second half of the uh, third millennium BC. Right, so that's a brief run-through of the uh, prehistoric material. We shouldn't forget that uh, uh, Fort Evie is also uh, this important first millennium AD royal centre. And so far, our investigations have concentrated on, on the cemetery at Forteviate, which, uh, for those of you who don't know, is, is probably one of the largest uh, first millennium AD cemeteries uh, uh, known um, in, uh, in this part of Scotland, certainly. Uh, and the original focus of this is, appears to be this very peculiar square enclosure here. Unfortunately, our dating of that hasn't been too, too good, but from the centre we've got scatters of uh, uh, Roman pottery. So there has been a suggestion that this could be a Roman Iron Age uh, enclosure, perhaps even some sort of a, a temple building. But from the uh, um, uh, late Roman Iron Age, from the uh, 4th and 5th centuries, we start getting a cemetery constructed in this area. A round barrow seems to be one of the uh, primary monuments here but also lots and lots of uh, unenclosed graves. So you can see all these little um, linear marks here, and these are all graves um, next to the uh, barrow monuments. Um, and an amazing sequence of burials going up probably at least until the 7th or 8th centuries, maybe even into the 9th century. Uh, square barrow monuments, uh, these ones are probably 8th, uh, 8th century, uh, with central burials, four post settings, but then again, unenclosed graves around about uh, these monuments as well. And then 2010, uh, we had a, another excavation on a slightly uh, different um, type of monument here. It's a square barrow enclosures, but not the classic ones with the uh, corners uh, uh, left uh, uh, undug at the, uh, the corners here. Um, two central burials, um, clear evidence that uh, the, the eastern uh, part has been added to this primary square monument here, 
and then traces of wooden coffins and burials um, at the centre of uh, these, these enclosures. And then we also, amongst the uh, prehistoric material, we also have clear evidence of the reuse of some of these ancient monuments in the uh, Pictish, uh, uh, Pictish period. Mm. So within the two, both hen henge monuments that we've dug to date, we have these absolutely ginormous pits dug in the centre of the monuments. So something like 12 metres across and four or five metres uh, wide and uh, up to two, two and a half metres in depth, uh, dug directly into the centre of these henge monuments. Um, very little material in them apart from burnt layers uh, towards the bottom. And our latest thinking on these uh, structures could be that they may well be some sort of underground feature of large um, timber or, or turf buildings, but that's kind of a work in progress <coughs> at the moment. Um, and then we've just also done a, a small scale excavation on this feature here, which may well be an enclosure boundary that goes with the cemetery. Um, so we, we're waiting on dates on that, but I, th I think there's a good chance this is, this is an enclosure ditch enclosing either the cemetery or the kind of royal settlement, which may be underneath the uh, uh, modern village. So really, you know, it's all adding up to quite an, ama uh, an amazing picture, really, of development of this <coughs> landscape over five, six thousand years with... Uh, an incredible um, prehistoric complex um, being transformed in the first millennium AD into uh, this major royal uh, centre. Okay.